for that second video, what percentage mm -hmm. failure and what percentage success did you have on it then? Because you, you basically said no, no failure is 100% failure. Yeah, so overall on the project, video number one was 10% successful. We, in terms of measurable results, we got like $11,000 that, that was pledged or donated to the film. Video number two, zero pledges. So that in itself was a 0%. It was a complete failure from the perspective of producing results. But in terms of where to go next, it was 100% success because that failure showed me where I needed to go next so I could tip it over at the 100%. So no matter what risk you take, and I just come from the school of thought, Sean, no risk is a 0%, is a 100% is failure. You're gonna learn something from it. If your heart is open, if you're committed, if you're on point on, you're gonna learn. It's just, it's just simply how it works. So what happened with the third video? It pushed over, we raised $100,000. Actually, we raised 104,000, it rocked. We, got, we went on CNN, ABC, NBC, CBC, Fox. It was in 40 newspapers across Canada, newspapers across the U.S. We are in so many newspapers across Europe. It went bonkers because the video was that compelling. And I'm a media expert, so I know how to pitch media. Ah, so how do you pitch media to get that, that kind of a <laughs> response? Well, <laughs> that's a complicated question to answer in a couple of minutes. Um, I do a lot of media mastery boot camps, so I do a lot of boot camps, and I have a ton of tools on my website for folks that want to do a deeper dive, like on how to create a press release or how to call the media or how to be good on camera. I have a lot of those tools. The, probably the biggest mistake that people make in terms of media is, it's, so can I say the word sex on your show? Of course. Okay, so it's kind of, and I'm a grandma, I'm allowed to talk about sex too. It's kind of like, uh, <laughs> it's kind of like when people approach the media, it's kind of like people are trying to have sex on the first date. And it doesn't work that way. You're not going to get a second date if you're out with that gorgeous gal and you, you're you trying to have sex. It just doesn't work unless you're in that conversation and that's where you are in your maturity, which to me is a low maturity, okay? Especially if you're trying to create create deep relationships. When you approach the media, it's about creating long-term, ongoing relationships for the life of your business. Just like you have exquisite vendors or exquisite clients, you want to have exquisite media contacts that you work with over and over and over again and that they continuously come back to you for sound bites for ongoing stories. And probably one of the biggest mistakes I see people make in this realm is someone will say, oh, Sean, cool, I was on MSNBC. And I'm like, oh, that's awesome, when? And they'll say, seven years ago. And I'll be like, oh, yeah, yeah, seven years ago. That's like being married and only having sex once every seven years. You want to have ongoing sex. If that's a little too graphic, please, <laughs> <laughs> please forgive. It's about creating the relationship so that it's a mutual rewarding relationship. And most people don't know that. So how do you build those relationships? Yeah, probably the biggest one is piggybacking off of stories that are already happening. What happens with entrepreneurs a lot is they have an event or a new book or a new product and they just start pitching, pitching, pitching the media. They don't care about their book. They don't care about their product. They don't care about their service. They care about the stories that are going on right now unless they already have a relationship with you. So one of the biggest tips I give is, you know, I pick Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Those are the best days to actually pitch a story because a lot of studies come out on those days, Tuesdays and Wednesdays. And go into, the, go online, go on USA Today, go on the CBC, see what people are currently talking about. Are they talking about the economy? Did a local plant close within your community? Is that the big story? Find out what the big stories are and piggyback your expertise on those stories that are currently working right now. So let's say the housing market has gone down today. Let's say the housing market's gone down or, um, or no, let's say this. Let's say right now is the time to buy. Buy a house. It's the perfect time. New stats came out. New study came out. And let's say you're a real estate person, okay? You might call the media that morning and say, hey, my name is Joe Field. Saw there's a story in the CBC today or in the USA Today about now's the time to buy. I've got three tips on the worst mistakes you can buy when you're buying a house and helping you in this realm. My cell phone number is this. I look forward to connecting with you. And if they're going to do that story, which they may be doing, they're going to be looking for an expert to talk about that those national statistics, to talk about and give tips. So the game is to help them first 
just like in good networking. Help them first, show your expertise, and start creating the relationship. Very powerful. And how did you use that in Project Forgive? Or did you oh, I, already reach out to your, your contacts? Well, I already have well, one of my services that my company provides is we provide PR services. And when you're actually hiring a PR company, you're simply buying the relationships is what you're doing and we pitch it for you. So I have some pretty exquisite relationships from Inc. Magazine to CNN to to a lot of the larger networks in the U.S. and also CBC, you know, CTV, morning shows, all that, because I come to Calgary quite a bit. And I've done a lot of Canadian TV. So, so leveraging those relationships and saying, hey, how you doing? Don't know if you know it. This is what the press release would look like. Our video went viral. We did it without YouTube. That was the big hook that I used is we did it without YouTube um, because there's a dime a dozen of videos that go viral on YouTube. We did it without YouTube. Check this out. People are going nuts for the story. And even one story that aired in the that went in the Detroit Free Press, which is a very large metropolitan newspaper in the area that I live, which is Detroit. The reporter did one story. She received 11,000 emails on that one story. So that's how big an impact it can have when you play this media game. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video and be sure to like, share, and comment below. Subscribe to this channel for more interviews. And if you want to go further and be live on the interviews, you can go to mmt.tv forward slash live to find out how. Like on Facebook and follow on Twitter to ask your questions. And be sure to get on the mailing list. Go to mmt.tv to get access to all the things that are not contained in these interviews. All the links are mentioned below. And until next time, break the rules, change the game, and be a rock star.